Cloud. Hi, Shabul. Hi, Anita, as well. And uh, live transcriptions. All right. Well, hi, everybody. Welcome to our oddly started Chaos DEI <laughs> working group meeting on September 7th. If you could add yourself and if you have any favorite colors. I always like green. I don't like red has never been one of my favorite colors, but I almost put green. I really like green. Too, I like green but... a lot. I like yeah. blue a lot too, but because I'm wearing blue today. Um, all right. So let's see. Thanks for getting minutes in the chat. Um, societal value metric. Can we come gather all the ideas in this category into one metric? So did, I'm guessing I, I put that it. on the agenda because um, I was looking at the metric spreadsheet and, I'll bring it um, up. I, you know, we kind of have done this with things like event accessibility, where mm -hmm. it's just kind of like you're like just subjectively answering, you know, a bunch of questions about the, the nature of the project. Yeah. So I don't know. I just thought I would throw it out there and see what people think. So would it be like um, like one metric, for example, like a well-being metric, and like the goal of the like is that what you mean, or one metric I, well, like improving justice? I I was going to even go so far as to say, does this project provide societal value? Oh, I see. It? And then these would be like maybe the areas that it does that. I see what you're saying, and so we. We say like the objectives are to improve access for folks, to improve justice for folks, something like that. Yeah, and like the the measure, the thing you're measuring is maybe the extent to which this project provides societal value, and then it could be different components of that. Like, I see. Um, like that's how we do kind of event accessibility. It's the extent mm -hmm. to which are you providing an accessible quote unquote event, and here are the ways that you can do that. And so and you don't have to do them all. But like this is a, these are different paths that you can take. Right. To, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because like maybe there's projects that do more than one of these things, or you know. Well, yeah. I, I like that idea too because I, it would probably help get this um, what's currently a focus area like off the ground a bit. Like yeah, from a social societal perspective. Yeah, I, I agree. I because I think it's really um, interesting and important to look at this, um, but also it's been languishing for a long time because it's hard and no, you know, we don't really know yeah. how to kind of move these forward. Um, so that was just a suggestion as a way to I don't know where it would fit on this spreadsheet if we're still keeping focus areas or if we're going to kind of get rid of that. Well, but the focus areas, I think, are just going to basically stay in the spreadsheet. Okay, so you know, maybe just, under project and community, it would go. Yeah, because I don't think it matters too much where we put them at this point. Okay. Um, yeah, it, that, out of all of these, it's not event diversity. It's probably not governance. It's probably not leadership. It's probably project and community. Um, I like that idea. I don't know that all of these would some of these seem a little redundant so like yeah for re sure reducing injustice and improving justice seem like the same the same yeah yeah <laughs> um boy these are do you have have, has it, have you seen anything these are hard um like to think about, they're good to think about, but hard to think about. Yeah, and I think that that's where we would have to just let the project kind of reflect on their own, mm -hmm. uh, their own mission of the project itself. You know, like, um, so like somebody like Kubernetes, like you could you could argue that, yeah, they do help improve access for people because these other projects are using them to do their work or, mm -hmm. you know, um, just I think it's just important that we 
recognize that this is a way that we can provide a, a project can provide value to the world, like mm -hmm. a, an open source for social good kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And I know like um, GitHub, I think they still have areas of their explore part um, of the get of the GitHub website where you can like look for projects to use or contribute to. And I think they have a section for social good. Um, yeah. So I'm wondering, okay, I'm trying, I always try to get to my tabs and the thing, thing blocks me. Um, so maybe take a look. Like there's an open source project, for instance, that is solely geared to provide a list of gender neutral bathrooms in public spaces. I do, and so yeah. it's not your typical open source project as far as there is a code and there is an app that goes with that for people to pick, but it's also like got a deeper meaning to it. You know, it's got some kind of deeper value that it provides. And so it might, it just might be something interesting for projects, I think, to reflect on. Yep. I'm wondering if there might be, I just typed to, you know, the Ford Foundation, a lot of the projects that they support, they're not always open source projects, I don't think, yeah. you know, but I think there's, it's a lot about uh, doing social good. And maybe there's some language there that we could find that would help in this regard. Yeah. Okay, so yes. Let's I can I can take an action item to just start kind of fleshing some of that out. Yeah. If you want. Start kind of bringing. Okay. That'd be great. I think too, it helps with like, so I, my personal feeling is the more diverse the open source ecosystem is, the the more attractive it is also to a diverse set of contributors, mm -hmm. you know, because not everybody wants to work on a Ruby library, for instance, you know, some people <laughs> want to work on something that has a little more um, like personal meaning for them. Yep. And so I think that that's a, that is a component of open source health. Okay, no, I like that. Um, and I agree that reducing this, at least in the hopes of moving this forward, is a good idea. Yeah, at least it's a step, maybe. Yeah, and what, what, what we may end up finding is if you're putting together, like if you're bringing things together, like maybe one metric is not appropriate. You know what I mean? But it, it's at yeah, least maybe it turns two or three, but it. Um, yep. Okay. Okay. Maybe it turns into a model or whatever, but yeah, at least it's we're going to move it forward, I think. Okay. Um, so maybe the to bring ideas together too, like maybe you could just bring them back to this working group, like loosely. Yeah. Like, well, I don't think you have to drop it into a metrics template at the moment. Okay. Or a model. I don't know what you think, but that seems like a step ahead. But, okay. Cool. Thank you. Uh, any comments from anybody or? Elizabeth or on this idea. All right, great. Um, so I just wanted to keep people posted. I'm, I had really, I've kind of gone through these two metrics. Um, you know, based on the comments that we had last week from people and I tried to clean them up. I think I did this yesterday. There are still a few things that I need to, to straighten out just a little bit some of the language in here. So I'm still working on them. Um, one of the things that did come up was we have a metric called contribution attribution. And the question was, how is this different from recognizing contributors? And I've tried to weave that in here just a little bit that the difference that I'm trying to draw out is attribution is just ensuring that people are attributed to the work they do. Recognizing contributors is really kind of meant to draw out that attribution and celebrate those contributions within a community. I think, Elizabeth, this is the point you were bringing up last week as well, that sure, they're, they are necessarily uh, connected with one another. Um, and so I, I think that's it. I, I did have a hard time sometimes like thinking about how 
um, you measure the recognition of contributors versus how you can go about recognizing contributors. <laughs> you know what I mean? So like I sometimes I feel like I'm writing like host an appreciation event and observe how many people attend. Like the recommendation is hold an appreciation event and observe how many people attend. Seems like a I feel like I'm just tossing on <laughs> something at the end to make it a measure. Um, does that make sense? Like, I think I agree. I, I think we had that same kind of issue in the event accessibility because we were kind of just listing like, like what you do can you, do to do these things. Right, you know? right. But I don't know if that's actually like how you would measure it. I don't. Um, so we did have that conversation too. And it did come down to um, mostly just, yeah, like this observing if you're doing these things. And then if you have, you know, if you're doing 10 out of 10, then that's your measurement, I guess. That's your percent. I don't know. <laughs> but that's kind of how we landed on it. Okay. Yeah, because here's another one. Like, um, like, we recommend you just do these things. You can also observe if. Uh, so, okay. So could you, could somebody maybe take a look at just a few of these? as written, maybe just even right now, you know what I mean, or in the next whatever, right when we end the meeting, and just see if you think the language could be improved a little bit. The link is here for recognizing contributors. Uh, Mike? Yeah, Armstrong. Yeah, I think one area that we could also strengthen the understanding of some of these metrics is to see concretely how some communities are applying it. And then we also, look into the literature how people have studied it i remember like these metrics you, you mentioned the attribution and recognition yeah they may have some nuance and among them but it may just be a kind of synthetic sugar in some cases for example uh, now that most communities are talking contribution not limiting to code this contribution yeah so it's difficult to measure community-based contribution. So they go now to kind of recognizing people who have been actively participating. But right. in the nutshell, in the nutshell, when you are attributing something to somebody like, you know, this piece of code, like the authoring commit, where Git, uh, Git and uh, most of these platforms like GitHub, GitLab, and most have been uh, using it, so yeah. by any yeah, when you use a kind of uh, uh, let's say you contribute in a community, they attribute that section to you. Then recognition will come in to say, okay, I mean Amy is here; she can help us more with OpenStack uh, system. I've studied that system in the OpenStack, so they can give you some credits towards an event. Do you have Do you have something from OpenStack, Armstrong? Yes, I have a paper that I published, uh, a recent paper, and I think uh, Amy can also chip in something because it's a system she is most familiar okay. to. But I can because it's always good to try to see where, in what particular area we are talking. Because in some cases it might just be like one side of a coin. A coin has two phases, just to say we are emphasizing this aspect here and emphasizing this other aspect here. But in the nutshell, we are in the same direction. Yep. Yeah. Um, I agree. So could you either put the link to your paper in this or comments about that in this document or okay. or in the minutes? I'd prefer it in this document just so it's all in one spot. You know what I mean? Okay. Uh, do, do we share, uh, have we shared the, the, this document? Yeah. So in the minutes, it's right here. Oh, okay. Okay. Then yes. I'll do that right away. Yep. That'd be great. Thank you. Okay. And to your point too, Armstrong, this one with recognizing contri uh, recognizing contributors, this is, there were several studies that were included here in the objectives that do talk about this. Um, the other thing that I had on this one was um, like this, as far as I can tell from all contributors, I don't know if you can see this, but like from all contributors, what it does is it adds 
a contributor name to the readme. So it's a way to make sure that you add, that I think it's a bot, but it just, it makes, you know, like a contributor list. It just adds it to the readme. I don't, that doesn't really feel like recognition. <laughs> it feels like just making sure that they're, or is it? This is like this weird gray area between attribution and recognition, which I'm just not sure about. Do you see what I'm saying? Like, yeah, I personally think it's recognizing okay. them because um, it's in, you know, like a more central place. I think attribution would be like a little more hidden. Like you have to dig for it a little bit, like kind of like a git blame. You know, you yeah. have to kind of go for that. Okay. So um, that's my personal feeling. Yeah, I mean, that's I'm kind of I'm with you on that. Like I kind of leaned that way. And I also think if, if a project is implementing something like this from all contributors, they're certainly trying to recognize their contributors. That was my other, okay. Same with um, things like open collective, you know, just doing open budgets to recognize financial contributors. We do this with our LFX account and with our open collective account. Um, so, so it's not like an event. And then what about like, this is insights, right? It's, I mean, it's recognizing the work and it's drawing it out. Like it's drawing it out of a git commit to your point, Elizabeth. Do you think these are okay? Yeah, like uh, what we found in our studies, most of the tools, including what even the OpenStack is using to do recognition, doesn't capture all the contributions that people make. And that we also proposed a tool, a heuristic. We wrote a tool that could really identify those missing contributions. Because okay. sometimes uh, some people will uh, fail to use the co-authoring committee or they may do some work and they don't really see. Sorry for that noise. That's so, okay. Yeah, now this recognition, for example, we are going for the KiosCon. If, for example, this series or this uh, series of the, the conference, we saw some people who have been active in the community. Recognition, they say, oh, thank you for your active participation in this mm -hmm. year. This is like a $5 or a $50 gift card or something like that, or a free registration towards that particular event. But attribution is something that goes in for life. It's like a, a proprietary kind of a, a kind of copyright. It's a stamp yeah. that any time in the in any year you want to look for your contribution, you can you can really pull it out and say this is what I've been working for the past ten years. These are my contribution. That attribution okay. goes into that way. Now, but recognition is just like a medal, something that they give you an award, and it's a one-time thing. If the coming year you don't contribute more, people contribute more than you, you will not receive it. It doesn't mean you are you are not in the community. It's just that they want to look outstanding people okay. and then give them recognition. Okay. Um, if do you have does OpenStack use um, like a tool or a system to recognize people, or is it just part of how? Yes, they have a tool. They have a tool that they collect uh, uh, contributions within uh, within the release cycle. Could you? Sh that would be. I would probably prefer that over this. Mm -hmm. If you have a screenshot of that tool. Okay. So, Are we talking Stackalytics? Yes. The, the, okay. There are also tools in the government repository, Amy. I think uh, usually when there is a future freeze period, they run that tool for to collect all the active contribution for that period. For example, to make people the active contributors. Yes. Okay. And we also use it to verify that people are eligible for um, elections. Like I'll go through there and see whoever has nominated themselves to make sure that they meet the requirements. Um, CNCF is using it now. It's now at Stackalytics dot io not dot com dot io well, we should certainly include that here okay 
Okay, well, I'll, I'll move on. Armstrong, if you could add at least just some pointers to that in this document, that would be great. Okay, I'll take a look at it. Thanks. And then I'll move it. Stack analytics. Uh, Very cool. Thank you, Amy, for that as well. All right. Um, I'd like to move on to just a few things here. So, um, as we think about project badging that's moving forward, there are some details that we need to kind of lay out for applicants to the project. So if you are, thanks Armstrong, if you are um, a project and you're looking to apply for project badging, there are, I think maybe some, some guidelines that we need to kind of set or parameters that we need to set as to what a project badging program is about. Uh, and I think we do this with um, event badging. You know, we kind of explain what it is that this badge is about, what we're trying to accomplish. I think we need to do that with, with project badging. And um, I think project badging is going to be quite different than event badging because of the automatedness of it, that we can't just use what we say in event badging for project badging. I think the narratives are going to be different between the two programs. And so I'm curious from people's perspective, like if if we're doing a, if we're doing project badging via automation, so a project contains the dei.md file, and we automate looking for that MD file, and we automate looking for particular headers in that file, and if the file is present and the headers are present, we we kind of say, yeah, we recognize that this is present. So, and that the community cares enough to put a DEI.md file in and take time to reflect on, on these headers, these particular metrics. So given those parameters, what do you think we're trying to accomplish with this program? You know what I mean? Like, what, what can we... What can we reasonably say to people that we're trying to accomplish? And the, the I think the wrong answer is like, we're trying to ensure that any project that participates in this program is fully diverse, <laughs> inclusive and equitable. Like we can't say that. So <laughs> what can we say, <laughs> you know? And at the other end, we probably can't say this project does nothing. So do people have thoughts on what we can say? <laughs> I, you know, I mean, what, I, th I think we need to, to, to work this out though, because I think we need to, to clearly say this to people who are looking to participate in the project. On um, particular DI metrics and share. Something like that. I don't know. How does that read? Project aims to have communities reflect on particular DEI metrics, the four, and share that reflection with community members. Something like that, or any of these. Yeah, that um, aim the aims to have communities that um, kind of makes me stumble a little if I was reading this. 
I would just say the project aims to make an effort towards, or the project makes an effort towards centering DEI within their project. Well, I should say the DEI badging program. Yeah, 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 towards. Centering DEI within open source projects. Yeah. Okay. I think education is a part of it too. Okay. Um, how it helps educate open source maintainers on ways they can center DEI or like gives them things to think about essentially or things to consider. That maybe they didn't before. Okay. okay. We can work on the language a little bit, but something like this. Okay. If that seems similar to that one. You know, become true. educated. Yeah, true. Okay. Cool. Right, not that. Anything else? Okay. Um, something in the chat. Oh, bye, Anita. Hi, Anita. Um, future goals of the program. Like if these are our initial goals, you know. Do we have like a a reach that we want to talk about? I mean, I know you're not supposed to do this with goal setting, but I mean, essentially, we're trying to improve diversity, equity, inclusion across open source. But that's like really ambiguous and lobby. So, but that's essentially what we're trying to do. Yeah. What about um, oh, like maybe along those lines, like by um, including, I don't know how to quite say this, like community members in the um, reflection, um, presentation, something. So this is this goes back to like that the line of like open sourcing DEI. That's the the phrase that Demetrius uses a lot. Uses a lot. Yeah. But like, um, this is so maybe the maybe we almost just say that like that DEI is not just an effort um, in open source. It's not just an effort by like one community, but it's an effort, or even just like one group within a community. But it's an effort. Um, by the community at large. Okay. All right, trying to improve the AI concept. Okay, that probably needs to be worked on a little bit. And I don't know, something like that. Like we want to yeah. bring people, that's all I'm trying to do. You know, like bring people to the, um, into the entire process. And we're doing it like openly at this point, like by putting a DEI.md file, I think it's one of the first, it will be one of the first like, Codes of conduct are obviously that, um, uh, but it, yeah, but kind of thinking to this point about things to consider, like it's more than just a code of conduct. All right. Yeah. Okay.
you know, a part of me, I don't like I, I would like to, I feel like there was the discussion about remember including codes of conduct, like when GitHub it allowed communities to include codes of conduct as part of the process of building a new repository, I think. Mm -hmm. Like they had a, a really big um, increase in the number of projects that had codes of conduct. And then it plateaued. Do you remember that conversation or it kind of leveled out? Yeah. And so like to to continue to push, push may be a bad word here, but push. To or, stay, yeah, and grow how we think about how we center. Yeah, because it, it's not just a one and done. Beyond the code of conduct, like you can't just put that in there, and yeah, and that's not good enough. So we're we're kind of yeah. trying to push beyond that first um, first inclusion, something along those lines. That's kind of my goal as well with the project. Um, okay, text that describes what the badge is signaling. Let's skip this for now. We have just two minutes here. So Elizabeth, I'm also doing this because this is kind of, I think, the document that we need to put together. Yeah. That um, text that describes what the badge is signaling. So it signals uh, an interest. Yeah, I think that's good. Like that's it. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, and uh, willingness to learn, or become educated. You know. Uh, yeah. An interest in centering DEI, a willingness to learn, and a willingness. This could go back to the prior points. A willingness to um, open source this conversation within your community, something like that. Yeah. Do we wanna say anything about how this program gives a, a project a place to expand on their DEI efforts in it, like in a central place or like, like bring visibility to those efforts also? Does that, where does that go? Would that go somewhere? Maybe a future, maybe a goal of the project or something, a goal of the badging, you know. Everybody's leaving. Just you and me. And Amy. Hi, Amy. Shabul dropped off too. How about that? Yeah, I think so. Cool. All right, does that help? I think this should help. We're out of time. Yeah, yeah, we can just pull this into that other doc. That's what I was thinking. We could just, because this will start kind of articulating the things that folks need or that, and it, I think it's also starting to help set the parameters of, <laughs> of what we're even saying that we can do. Um, okay, cool. All right, well, thanks for coming back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was good. It actually worked out to be a great meeting. So thanks for yeah. uh, for coming back and, and, and jump starting it again. <laughs> <laughs> right on. All right, everybody. We'll talk to you later. Bye. Bye, Amy. Bye.